What's going on everybody? You're back with Shades and we're going to continue our Let's Play of Katawa Shoujo. Hopefully my lighting situation is a little better. I tried to block out as much sunlight from the back from over there as I could. Not going to happen. Also, I realized that I do wear this shirt so goddamn often whenever I record. Like, it, it makes it seem like it, I record everything on the same day. I don't. That'd be weird. But uh, la last time we left off, we went to visit Rin and Rin is high on... Cold medicine? Not entirely sure. Also, my lips are chapped. But yeah, I think she's high on like cold medicine or something like that. Cause like she took way too many pills and now she's like, "Oh, I'm loopy." Seriously, guys, don't don't take a shit ton of pills. Like, take whatever's prescribed. If it's over the counter, take whatever's recommended. But don't take a shit ton of pills. It could kill you. Like, actually. <laughs> but anyway, or at least at the very least, damage your liver. But anyway, your room looks nice. It's an empty sentence, one used to fill empty spaces in conversation. But my wits are failing me pretty hard right now. Yeah, would you like me to show you the place? I mean, it's just one room. Well, what else could there be? She looks down at her half-open shirt quizzically, making in me inadvertently follow her gaze to her chest. Oh, I guess I already did. Shit! At least she's not, like, super unaware. Oh god, I want to lean forward, but like it's bad for my back if I do that. Ugh. That's, that's why I zoom in with this camera, but it makes everything look so pixelated when I edit. it. Ugh. Yeah, there we go. I can't deny that, no matter how hard I try to act properly. <laughs> it's very nice you came to see me. It makes me feel very... what's the word? You know, the one about things and stuff. Anyway, you came. Ha ha! It's a joke, but also a double entendre. Rin's rambling makes me remember that I actually came here for a reason. Hey, about what we talked about on Monday. On the rooftop, remember? Hmm? Rin doesn't seem to be exactly attentive right now, not that she ever is. I plow ahead to get it off my chest anyway. I just wanted to tell you I'm gonna be better from now on, I guess. I hate being pathetic, so I decided I'm not going to be anymore. I know that feeling, boy! Being, being like, pathetic and realizing your self-loathing is the worst. But it, it like it, it shows how good of a person you are if you're willing to improve. Also, I think my camera's lopsided just a little bit. I guess that's all. Okay, isn't that good? A few blurry words flow out of her lips slowly and uncontrollably. I'm happy for you, I think. That's what I think. You should move the mouse out of the center of the screen. You shouldn't look so sad all the time. I mean, looking sad is fine if you're not sad, but you look sad like you're actually sad. That's no good. Are you going on some training camp where they make men out of boys or mountain or mountaintop meditation? No, I don't think so. Oh, I guess that's fine too. The sentences the sentences come out of her mouth and probably her brain one at a time with a small pause between each, making her gibberish hard to understand. I just think it seemed like a good idea. Maybe it's not. Rin finishes with one more line, getting to say the last word over herself. An impressive display of what I can only describe as mental shadow boxing. While I'm embarrassing myself, might as well tell you that I'm sorry that I said some stupid things to you last week. It's your own business to decide what you're going to do. She seems to not register my words at first, but the understanding lights in her eyes as she waves her hand, her head around oh, in a way that could be interpreted as anything. It's okay. I probably said stupid things, too. It's just sometimes a bit hard to keep my thoughts the way I like them. They're not very straight, at least most of the time. Ha ha! Not that I want to have them straight, I just wish they were at least in some shape. Round is fine, too, but I need more definition. My thoughts are very messy. Messy. As she fell asleep. She repeats the word melanch melancholically, then flops lying down in her bed and nuzzles her head against her pillow, shutting her eyes. Enough. Tired. You should go. I'm going to sleep again. She opens one eye to look at me. Was it you who likes to look at sleeping girls? Or someone else? Maybe there were many of those. I can't remember. You can stay if you want. No, no, I'll, I'll leave. I have to do homework anyway. They quickly, quickly, quickly crank one out. <laughs> oh god. I, I, I've been playing Honey Pop again recently. Um, um, mostly because, like, the game itself is actually really fun, but, um, 
uh, I found like there's like another like uh, H game that's like kind of like Honey Pop, only does everything Honey Pop does in the wrong way. So I I, I played that game and I'm like I miss Honey Pop, so I just go play Honey Pop again. So yeah, I, I decided to play that again. It, it was just just for funsies. Anyway, I stand up from the chair, I take a step toward the door. Wait. Her request stops me in my tracks. Not that I intended to scoot off right away. I look over my shoulder at a girl lying in her bed, again with the strangest kind of smile on her features. She should, she should smile more often. I can walk you to the door. It's, it's the least a gentleman can do. Rin giggles like a little kid, making me beyond absolutely certain that she took far too much of her cold medicine today. I have always wanted to say that. Slowly and with difficulty, Rin first rises to a sitting position again, then stands up with even more difficulty and more slowly. As if guided by some masculine autom auto automation. Wow, okay, I can't read today. <coughs> Jesus. My eyes instantly lower to the curve of her thighs and the striped panties, at which point my manners force me to lift my gaze back to Rin's eye level. Boy, I get that you're in high school, and I get that hormones are running wild in you right now. But be respectful. Respect to women! <laughs> It's getting almost too hard to do that. It shouldn't. It honestly shouldn't. Rin is standing, although barely. It looks like she has trouble keeping her usually decent balance. Again, probably a side effect of the medicine. Yo, hello. She takes an unsteady step toward me, then another smaller one, and she notices that it's not a good idea. Uh, that it's not a good idea to try to take big steps. I feel my muscles tense as I prepare to catch Rin if she falls down. That fucking happened. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <coughs> Whoops. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. I'm not sure what I expected. I expected her, her, her to like fall over. I, I, no, no, no. What I expected, like what I honestly expected, was for them to just walk out. Like she takes it to the door, he walks out, they leave, and then we just, we just transition. We just transition away. Not this. I know this was made like. In Japan, and I know this was made with anime in mind, but I never, I never would have expected this to go full anime trope. I know all the characters are like tropes in themselves, but I didn't know they would go like cliche. Oh well, I'll take it. But personally, I do prefer a slow burn romance to uh, a high speed one, which is what all of this game is. It's a slow burn, and I love a good slow burn. She manages to take two more steps before she falls against me. To my surprise, neither her downward momentum nor our slight height difference are able to stop Rin from pressing her heart-shaped lips squarely against mine. Now, did she do it on purpose? It looks like she did it on purpose. Also, the music makes it seem like she did it on purpose. I'm moving the lights closer to my face so that I can get, I can get more my face brighter, but it's not working. As our lips part after our confusing moment of nothing but the taste of... Rin. I look down at her, trying to find some explanation for this bewildering event. The euphoric smile of a madman broadens on, lips, on Rin's lips again, and... I wonder if I will remember this tomorrow. <laughs> I am absolutely stumped at how to respond. Rin takes a step backwards, separating her body from mine, and making me only now realize that they were even connected in the first place. The second step is actually a fall backwards, luckily straight onto her bed. The soft thud of Rin's thin body makes a, uh, makes against the mattress breaks the silence. <sighs> uh. I move quickly over to see her if she heard it, to see if she hurt herself, only to be met with a peaceful face of dreaming. Rin sleeps. She's lying diagonally across the bed, somehow managing to have simultaneously fallen asleep while standing up and fallen down in a way that she didn't injure herself. Fool's luck. I tuck her in, covering her with the sheets as well as I can. She feels very light, even though I'm not that strong. I stand up to her to look at her, the oval, the oval-shaped face, the dark eyelashes shut against the feverish cheeks, the slender body covered with the pale sheets. Rin sleeps. That was almost poetic. A conflict. No, conflicts plural. Churn inside of me. I think about calling a nurse to keep an eye on her, but decide against it. After taking one more glance at her peaceful face, I decide that she'll be fine. You are not a medical professional. But to be fair, she did take a lot of pills, and she is a bit loopy. 
I personally would have probably like, like gone to a nurse and be like, hey, Rin may have taken a bit too many pills uh, from her cold medicine. And uh, she's a little loopy right now. I went in there. Uh, she's fine for the most part, but she's a little disoriented. So uh, might be good to keep an eye on her. That's what I would do personally. I do pocket the remaining pills though. Good idea. I exit the room and close the door soundlessly behind me. I exhale deeply, only now realizing that I had held my breath for the better part of a minute. <sighs> Jesus Christ, boy. Breathe. Taking a moment to relax, I try to calm down my heart, racing like a jackrabbit. I had trouble getting to sleep la that night, so the next morning finds me exceptionally groggy. I briefly consider skipping class, but I remind myself that I was supposed to be a stronger person now. I get up like a good boy and put on my uniform, then make my way to the main school building without eating breakfast. Uh, boy, you should be eating breakfast. That's what strong people do. Gotta get gains on gains on gains. <laughs> How you gonna make your gains, man? <laughs> I sit on my seat in... In classroom 33, waving a greeting to Misha and Shizen like I do every morning, and let the day wash over me. The afternoon classes are always longer than those in the morning. This is true regardless of whether I counted by the minute or by the number of doodles drawn in my notebook. Today I'm especially distracted, as I keep thinking about Rin. Don't we all think about Rin? <laughs> Did I manage to properly tell her that I want to get better? Did she understand a word of what I was saying? I'm thinking about the kiss we shared and what it means. She was so out of her mind. Maybe it means nothing. But we've been getting closer lately. What does that mean? To be fair, Rin's a very hard person to read. I think about Rin more and more nowadays. I wonder if she thinks about me. Probably not, but, you know, be positive. The ringing of the bells makes me flinch, and then I realize that I haven't been paying attention during the latter half of class at all. I look at the assortment of sketches traveling up and down the margins of my notebook. The only thing I've got done in the last hour. Feeling vaguely disappointed in myself, I pack up and get, get to the hallway. <sighs> hey oh Rin is standing right outside the door, her presence stopping me in my tracks as soon as I spot her. Her posture is relaxed as always, but suddenly I feel like I just ate a crowbar. I'm having a hard time meeting her gaze. She doesn't seem to have any trouble looking at me, but those dark eyes are making me feel flustered for no reason. Oh, there's a reason. There's a fucking reason called teenage hormones and overthinking it. <laughs> to be fair, if I was in that situation, I'd probably be freaking out too. It's hard to look straight at her, so I turn to face my way a little. I don't know what one should say in this kind of situation. How about hi? How's it going? How's your day? Are you feeling better? There's a few things I, I, that I would say. Then again, I rarely know what to say in, to Rin in any given situation. Uh, hi. Hello. Oh, not that, that's not her voice. Hello. I try to rid, get rid of the awkwardness in my voice and invoke a more natural way of speaking. Trying to be natural makes you sound less natural. I suddenly worry about where I should put my hands. It feels like they're in the way somehow. In your pockets. Put them in your pockets. <laughs> How are you feeling? You were pretty out of it yesterday. I'm okay. What do you mean yesterday? You don't remember? She tilts her head to the side like a bird, looking somewhat confused. Is that a confused face? What? <laughs> Remember what? I have a pretty bad memory. About yesterday. What about yesterday? I came to see you and... I don't remember that kind of thing happening. She really doesn't remember? I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel disheartened all the same. I remember that I promised to show you one place, though. Did that happen for real? Maybe I think that I remember that and I really don't. No, that was real too. Oh, do you want to go? Now? Yeah. Well, sure, why not? Is it far? It's not. Together we walk downstairs and then outside. The usual summer day, whirring cicadas and all, greets us. It's immensely hot and without the air conditioning the classrooms offer, I start sweating immediately. I know that feeling. When I still lived on the, on the college campus, it was like super hot. Like, the thing is, like, summers in Jersey can be sweltering, and then the winters can be, like, just dreadfully cold. Spring and autumn are fine, though. They're warm or and cool, but, like, they're not awful. 
Uh, but like uh, the, the during September, it's usually like pretty still pretty hot until like the end of September. Um, but uh, like it's just it's just the worst. And, and then toward this like the 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 la later half of the spring semester, when it's getting close to summer, it gets hot. <laughs> And they don't turn. And sometimes they don't turn on the AC till like the last couple weeks. It sucks. We start along the tree-lined pathway that that leads towards the dorms. The cherry trees offer shade with the sunlight bl blinking through the holes in the canopy. The light creates a chaotic pattern of shadows dappled with bright places where beams hit the pavement. Rin's eyes are wandering in every direction but mine. I get the feeling that it's intentional. She leads me to the back of the gate once again, taking us through it and into the forest beyond. As before, the dropping temperature and the drastically reduced levels of light make it feel like the forest is swallowing us into its cavernous belly. We head uphill along the same path as last time, shaking around trees and boulders, over roots and rocks, past wild undergrowth. Birds sing somewhere in the woods, soloists for the humming background music of the treetops. We go past a small clearing with a big maple, what is now called the worry tree. The, cl the climb steepens, and it becomes easier again. I have to stop a few times to catch my breath, then hurry after Rin who doesn't stop to wait for me. Soon I'm out of breath again. Suddenly the trees end and we emerge from the forest. The boundary of the woods is sharp and abrupt, as though a line had been drawn to mark it. The hills continue to climb up a little further ahead, but from here to the top it's a rocky meadow. Patches of grass and small bushes that look like they are growing straight from the rock. As so We soon reach the highest point with the forest behind us and the view to every direction opening in front of our eyes. The city lies far be below and away, lazily reve reveling in the quiet afternoon mood. You can see pretty far from here, and the vista is beautiful. I wonder how high up we are. I breathe the fresh air and feel my heart rate slowly go back down. I think I might have over overdone it a bit. A higher pulse is dangerous for me. I'm feeling fine right now, though. Oh no, he might have an attack now. It's gonna happen. Because every I think every path, he gets at least one attack. I think. Did he have one in Cheese News Row? I don't think so. He had a lot in uh, Lily's Route and a few in um, Emmy's. Mm. I can't remember if there's any in Cheese News. <laughs> the wind picks up, ruffling my hair and causing the trees below to sway. It makes the grass undulate in waves as the breeze sweeps across the hilltop. The sun shines from the open skies upon us, a few clouds passing by to shadow it. What was painful heat before is now gentle warmth. I took a good look around. The hilltop is pretty in the way nature often is. Unplanned harmony found in the natural arrangement of things. The most striking feature is the abundance of small yellow flowers. They're literally everywhere in this small meadow. I can't help but comment on it. Wow, a lot of flowers. Yeah, do you know this kind? They will fly away. Yeah, dandelions. There are not many of them at school because they cut the grass so often. Nobody cuts grass up here. The fragile-looking flowers will turn to white and fluffy like cotton, and the wind will carry their seeds away. I crouch down to look at the one tiny yellow flower, silently basking in the sunlight. There's not a hint of white yet, so it's still waiting for its time to be filled. I brush my fingers against the delicate yellow petals, feel the soft texture in my fingertips. It feels nostalgic somehow. I hear Rin approaching from behind and stand back to face her. She has a weird look on her face. Something on your mind? I don't know. It's just... Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Rin never has so many things to say! You just look sad all the time and become upset so easily it makes me confused and I really don't remember much about yesterday except that you came to my room and that's why it might be because of me. So if it's because of me, I think I don't know why. It's because people don't really like talking to me and you might be the same and that would be sad. I know that people and I am talking about others that, that and me too always say that I'm strange and I talk strange and I talk strange things. So I thought I'd try to not to say strange things but it just makes me more and more makes me think more I knew and strange and colorful that was not a good word but maybe you understand anyway and all things so if you want to say something I don't really know how and then the words are not the same as the thoughts because something goes wrong on the way out but it's not like the thoughts are really the thing I should be saying it's more like the idea of the thoughts or feelings of the idea or the idea of the feeling but that's not really any of those either because there's no word for it unless I invent a new one which is not really useful so I've been thinking about doing things is better than saying 
so maybe because yesterday I took those pills and I was feeling a little strange, I might have done something that I shouldn't. Besides, I don't even know if it would be any better if I just could, could just could say the thought. There's no telepathy. That's real telepathy, isn't there? I think it'd be terrible and useful at the same time. But right now, I wouldn't mind because misunderstanding is so easy, but understanding is not. And I thought. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was the, the longest run-on sentence I've ever read. Um, also, the grammar was off a lot, but that's Rin. So, like, she was just, like, trying to, like, put her thoughts to words, and that's, that's, that's hard, so I'm gonna let her pass. But, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I grasp her shoulder and squeeze hard to make her stop. I don't have the capacity to take it all, all that in at once. Rin shuts up instantly. Take a breath. I'm not upset. Why would I be? I'm not upset. I, why would I be? I'm just a little confused, but it's alright. I wonder if I was making a face she doesn't like again. I guess I've been thinking about it yesterday all the time. Maybe I look weird. I wish I had a mirror with me all the time. No need to get it said all at once. I'll listen, even if you talk slower. It just came out. Sorry. I'm okay now. I just wanted to say something. I didn't mean that much. It's weird, isn't it? She looks at me with a surprisingly timid expression. One that I haven't seen before. I can't help but laugh a little. Yeah, it's weird. You're a pretty weird person, but there's nothing wrong with that. Thanks for being worried about me, but I'm gonna get better. I told you that yesterday, but I guess you don't remember that either. I don't. I wonder what else I forgot. Hopefully nothing important like my own name. That'd be terrible. Well, you kissed me. I did. Yeah, you did. On the lips. I try to sound as a matter of fact as I can, but I worry that I might be blushing again. Did you kick me? No, why would I do that? Then it's all good, right? It's okay, right? I didn't forget my name. I don't know whose number that is. Yeah, it's okay. I wish I was more suave so I could come up with a better follow-up to that. But nothing comes to mind. It's a good thing that Rin has more to say. It makes me feel relieved somehow. I think I should say sorry. I'm really bad with people. Some things are hard to understand. Like jellyfish. Do you understand jellyfish? I... I guess not. People are like jellyfish to me. I don't understand. Now it's her turn to make a face I really don't like seeing. I'd never really had friends. Okay. So apparently the choice is what about me, but I would have personally said what about Emmy? Because like her and Emmy are friends. They're like roommates. So I'm like, why not her? Um, but I, I understand why it's why not why not about why what about me? Nah, I'm your friend for one. I mean, think about it. We already talked to each other a lot, and we've gotten upset at each other and then forgiven each other for it. That's what they call friendship. It's really nice of you to say that. We've I've always been able to tell everything to pencils, paint, and paints and paper. They are my best friends. It's harder with people. I have to use words, and that is hard for me. Yeah, I know. You told me about how you forget. Rin nods at me wordlessly, and I dare to attempt showing her a little encouraging smile. I hope I do it properly. She doesn't reply in any way. I feel really glad. The distance Rin puts between herself and everything else has made me feel really uneasy ever since I met her. If we become real friends, I'm sure I could understand her more. I'm sure this way, we could close the gap of understanding between us. My thoughts don't transmit to Rin. She seems lost deep in thought. Wandering amidst the sea of yellow flowers covering the grassy hilltop, it's just as well. And that is where I'm going to end the episode for now. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This episode was pretty interesting. Uh, I didn't expect a kiss. Also, it's really cool that they're like, oh yeah, we're still friends. That was just a weird loopy thing that happened. Uh, she was high on medicine. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, that was interesting. Uh, also, like, this was, like, um, it's one of those things where it's like, this was a very, like, like, um, like, Visual novels are like a vacuum for like relationships. Uh, whenever you see a romance, like visual, like like basically romantic stories, fiction. Fiction is a vacuum, and like if the creator wants it to go a certain way, they can make it go that way. It's just like the steps to doing that must be done properly. But they can make it go any way they they goddamn want. Um. So in the, in the space of a visual novel, like all they're saying is very easily attainable, it, for them anyway. But like, it doesn't change the fact that these are real life lessons, that a friendship overcomes hurdles and like doesn't just have good memories. You talk, you converse, you communicate. Uh, but when something wrong, when something, when a disagreement happens or something wrong happens, yes, timer, I know, I'm wrapping up. 
uh, you kind of get over that. Even if it was a small thing, like a small disagreement like these two had. And like the weird kiss thing. But they're still friends after the fact. It's all about like being willing to communicate. Which is something I've done the past, like that I needed to work on the past like year or so. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me or from this series, hit the subscribe button. And you're not exiting the Shadyverse. My name is Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed. You're in the Shades. See you guys next time. Bye.